Let's look at the book of Hosea chapter 7. Now look what God does with the nation of Israel. But Ephraim is specifically mentioned when he's talking about the northern tribes here concerning Israel. Verse 1, when I would have healed Israel, then the iniquity of what? Ephraim, he's the one that's always responsible. Why? Because he's the one that retained that Babylonian religion. And the wickedness of Samaria, for they commit falsehood. And the thief cometh in, and the troop of robbers spoil it without. Ephraim is always to blame. Look at verse 11. Ephraim also is like a silly dove without heart. They call to Egypt. They go to where? Assyria. So notice right here, Ephraim... They have a heart that goes after two countries here. They want to go back to Egypt, and they want to go back to Assyria. Look at the book of Isaiah chapter 10. Isaiah chapter 10. Now, I neglected to show you this part, but Hosea chapter 4 mentioned at verse 17 Ephraim is joined to idols, let him alone. So that shows that Ephraim is done. God is done with Ephraim that time. All right, let's also look at the book of Isaiah chapter 10. Do you know what the Antichrist is known to be? Assyrian, yeah. Now, a lot of people are wondering, Pastor, you say that he's Assyrian, and then you say he's Assyrian, and then you say he's a Syrian Jew. So you got a Assyrian, Syrian, and Jew. And then some people are saying, oh, pastor, you don't even know the difference with Syria and Assyria. Now, look, you don't really know history, okay? You got to realize that if you look at the locality of Assyria, that's where Syria is going to be. So a lot of people don't use their heads. Why is it that, how, I don't understand how the Antichrist can meet all these countries. It's simple because if you look at the thousands of years of history, it became Assyria and then Syria and then etc. That's why the Antichrist can carry all those different conglomerations to himself. Now look at Isaiah chapter 10. This is the prophecy concerning the Antichrist persecuting the Jews. But look what he calls him. Verse 5, O oh, what? A Syrian, the rod of mine anger, and the staff in their hand, in my indignation. God calls the Antichrist the Assyrian. And what's he going to do? He's going to try to conquer Jerusalem. Verse 10, as my hand hath found the kingdoms of the idols, <coughs> and whose graven images did excel them of Jerusalem and of Samaria, shall I not, and as I have done unto Samaria and her idols, so do to Jerusalem and her idols? So Assyria is bragging that they can conquer Israel. Verse 12, wherefore it shall come to pass that when the Lord hath performed his whole work upon Mount Zion and on Jerusalem, See that? So this is a future reference where the Lord is going to do his full work with the nation of Israel. Notice that God says, I will punish the king of Assyria. And it goes to second advent when you look at verse 20. And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more again stay upon him that smote them. Speaking of that Assyrian that's trying to smite them but shall stay upon the Lord, the Holy One of Israel in truth. The remnant shall return. See that? So notice right here, this is a tribulation passage where they're surviving the Assyrian king. So this is not just referring to the historical timeline of Isaiah. It's carrying on to future prophecy, where the Antichrist is known to be the Assyrian. Look at that. And Ephraim wants to seek after who? You notice uh, Revelation chapter 11? What does the Assyrian Antichrist calls his headquarter? Egypt. How about that? And Ephraim goes after who? See that? How about that? Why? Because you need a fully demon-possessed Antichrist that will cover all bases that would attract the Jewish people and say, I am your Messiah. Worship me. How about that? Scary thought concerning about this. Mm -mm. Now, another thing concerning about uh, the history, which is pretty interesting, you know which country conquered the tribe of Dan? And Dan, a lot of people are having trouble tracing the tribe of Dan because it was pretty much swallowed up by Assyria. How about that? How about that? 
So the Antichrist is Assyrian, Syrian as well, because that's where it came from. And then he's also a what? A Jew. Could the Antichrist then come from these two tribes? There's a tradition, actually, that goes around saying that the Antichrist comes from the tribe of Dan. There's a tradition that goes on around that. But let me show you something even more wild. You ready? Look at, okay, so let's look at the book of Joshua, chapter 15. Joshua, chapter 15. Man, I'm still kicking myself. I really want to find that verse where it talks about Babylon worship revived at both Dan and Ephraim. It actually covers both places. So. But it is referring to Jeroboam when it talks about him. Anyways, let's go to Joshua chapter 15. Now, Judas Iscariot, we know that he's going to be, uh, his spirit is going to be revived within the Antichrist, correct? Okay, so we know that. A lot of people are wondering where he comes from, right? Now, when you, a lot of people are doing guesswork on his tribe, but his name could give the key, actually. Iscariot could be, because remember, Judas Iscariot is a Jew, right? So if he's a Jew, that name, remember, your New Testament went from Greek to Latin to English, right? So it's going to try to either transliterate or try to retain the name as much as possible, right? So going by accurate translation, when they do this with Iscariot, if he's a Jew, this goes from Latin and then from Greek, which your New Testament was originally written, and then the Greek word, Iscariot, could be a Greek transliteration for the Hebrew word, Iscariot. And the Hebrew word, Iscariot, would be referring to Kyriot, man of Kyriot. You know who took over the city of Kyriot? Look at Joshua chapter 15. Look what the Bible says. Look at Joshua chapter 15, verse 20, verse 20. The Bible says right here, This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Judah according to their families. Notice what is included right here. You'll notice verse 21, Kabzil, Eder, Jagur. Verse 22, Kina, Demona, Adada. Uh, verse 23, Kedesh, Hazer, Ithnan. You'll notice verse 25, Hazer, Hadata, and what? Kiriath. That's from the tribe of who? Judah. Now, if you think that's from his last name, that's pretty interesting. You should pay attention to his first name. That was pretty common in Israel, Judas, until after he betrayed Jesus. No one wants to use that name anymore. <laughs> Imagine naming your child Judas, right? But this is actually originally a good name. You might say, why? Because this was actually from Judah. That's what his first name is referring to. Judas was referring to Judah. No wonder Satan wanted him. Now, think about this. You might say, but pastor, uh, you mentioned before that so maybe the Antichrist could be coming from this tribe right here, Dan, right? How can he do Judah? Ah, this is really interesting. If, so I'm only saying if, if that Antichrist during the first half of the tribulation comes from an Assyrian Jew from Dan and Ephraim and maybe from one of the Jewish elites somewhere, he comes out and in the middle of the tribulation he dies. In the middle of the tribulation when he dies, from the tribe of Judah comes out Judas Iscariot and combines body and soul and spirit of evil where they unite the tribes together where they were originally divided. See, remember these two, remember Israel was divided to north and south. South was Judah. North was Dan and Ephraim. You know what's interesting about this? What is so interesting about that? This is interesting because look at how many prophecies are in your Bible where God promised, I will combine the north and the south together and your Messiah will rule over you and the north and south will never war again. You know what happens if, he, if this guy raises himself from the dead? You got Judah, uh, the southern tribes, and the northern tribes combined together. And then the Antichrist says, see right here? I come from the north and south. We can all combine together. I am that prophecy 